In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to light this cave. This is the final result we are trying to achieve and as you can see, it's not a photorealistic render. It's supposed to be a fast and simple lighting to achieve a stylish and conceptual look. So we are using a basic and simple approach to light this scene. I hope you enjoy this video. Hey everyone, my name is Ali Reza and I am a CG artist and a VR developer. This channel is about learning Unreal Engine to create environments and levels for PC and mobile games, ArcViz and also VR games and applications. If you want to learn Unreal Engine as a beginner, this is the right place for you. So please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. That would be a huge help for the future of this channel. Now let's jump into UE5 and get started. Alright, so it's a pretty simple scene modeled in Cinema 4D and imported to UE5. I used some planes to shape the overall space and then added some quixel assets on top of them. Now I am going to delete my lighting and start it from scratch. Having a pitch black viewport indicates that there are no light sources in the scene and we are good to go. Now let's create a folder to have an organized outliner. I am going to name it lighting and put all my lighting and post-processing actors inside it. Our first light source is going to be a directional light which simulates our sunlight. Here in the actors tab hit this light icon and you can see all kinds of light sources available in UE5. I will drag a directional light in my scene and then put it in my lighting folder. First of all, check the transform tab and make sure its mobility is set to movable. Static and stationary mobilities are used for light baking which we don't want to use in this scene. You can change its direction by holding Ctrl and L and then moving your mouse. We also need a sky atmosphere to replicate our sky, so in your actor tab type sky atmosphere and then drag it into the scene. Now we have a sky and its light which is going to be pretty useful in our next steps. My next actor is an exponential height fog. Again in the actors tab type exponential height fog and drag it into the scene. It's a very useful and fun actor to play with. You can use it in almost every situation and get very interesting results. Our next actor is a post process volume which is used to control our scene's overall look independent from our lighting setup. If it's not already in your scene, just type post-production volume in your actors tab and drag it in the scene. Now open the lens tab and then in the exposure settings give an even value to minimum brightness and maximum brightness to stop our viewport from changing its exposure automatically. Then in the post-process volume settings make sure infinite extend option is checked. If you don't turn it off, it only works within this boundary and in this scene there is no need to do that. As you can see now we have light outside of our model but inside of the cave there is no light yet. There are different ways to bring more light into the interior of the model. For example, you can get more sunlight by creating some openings in your model. Just select some of these assets and move them around to make openings for the sun rays to come in. In this case I preferred not to do that and create my desired lighting using a light material. Right click in your content browser and create a material. Let's name it light mat and open it. Right click in the blank space here and type constant 3. Then right click again and create a constant. We also need a multiply node to blend our two values together. I am going to choose a color and then multiply it by a constant value. I'm going to assign my light materials to these columns to get some light in our cave. Now as you can see these columns function as our artificial lights. Now let's go to our camera view and see what we have got so far. Alright, it's already looking pretty good but of course there is more room for improvement. Let's see how our lighting actors are contributing to the final image. 
The directional light is playing the role of a sun. If you remember, by holding Ctrl and L, we could control its direction. In its detail tab, we can change its intensity to see how it's affecting the scene. For example, bumping up the intensity value gives us a very heavy fog and a mysterious looking scene. And bumping it down creates a lighter fog and a warmer look. The exponential height fog also has some very interesting features you can play with. For example, you can change its density or its color to achieve the result you want. Our final step is tweaking some camera settings. It's nothing complicated. I just added some fin grain in my camera and added a little vignette effect. That's it, I'm happy with the results. So let's take a high res screenshot and finish the project. I hope you liked this video and if you find this tutorial useful don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, see you next time.